Good morning, everyone. I thought we would do our next thing for Isaiah. And if you haven't watched them, there's two other videos, three other videos on Isaiah out there. And I'm putting them in order. We do a pre-study of some background of Isaiah. And then we started last week in Isaiah. This week we're going to be in chapter 1 still, and each week will be a small snippet of Isaiah so that we can um, dig deep into it and find out everything we can learn from it. I'm stumbling over myself. It's morning. It's crazy. You know, my norm. All right, so the passage that we're starting with is... God's case against Judah. And I'm going to read the first three verses. And so if you want, get your Bible, get your uh, journal, and follow along with me. Journal in it. Write down notes. And then you can expand on it as you do your own personal study. All right. Isaiah 1, 1 through 3. The vision of Isaiah, the son of Amos, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, the kings of Judah. Two, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord hath spoken. I have nourished and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. That was the study we talked about last week, how the people of Israel rebelled against their God. Verse 3. The ox knoweth his own, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel does not know. My people does not consider me. And that's when I stopped and I thought, well, what happened? Why do they not know God and consider Him? They're His chosen people. What could have happened? And then I thought, it might be because instead of telling their children about God and their grandchildren about God and their friends about God and talking about God and singing songs about God and keeping his festivals and and all the things that they had they got busy like today how many times do we just let life overwhelm us and we get busy we get busy with, we have to get the housework done. We get busy with, we have to get the errands done. We get busy because we have so much work at work to do. And we get busy because of schoolwork. Or we get busy because the uh, friends want to do all these fun things. And we're not putting God first because we're putting the busy first. And then I thought, oh... That's probably what's happened to our nation. We used to be one nation under God. Now, people don't hardly consider them. Like here. And I thought, this is something we need as well. So my thoughts, do I know my Lord? Do I consider him as, the, as much as I should? Probably not. Then I put, please, Lord, help me to be like those, um, I messed up, sorry. Please, Lord, help me to be like those who consider God, that put God first, that always want Him in their lives 24-7, no matter what. And my, my verse this morning that I got on the app was Psalms 138.17. And it talks about God protecting us and safe. And it says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. 
Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. So right there, another reason. Why are we forgetting him? Why are we not putting him first in our lives for everything and sharing how great he is? He takes care of us. Then my thoughts went on to John 10, verses 27 through 30. And it's Jesus speaking, it's read. My sheep hear my voice. Are we listening for his voice? And I know them. If we're one of his sheep, he does know us. He knows us by name. And they follow me. Am I following him? Are we following him the way we're supposed to? And I give unto them eternal life. What a blessing. And they shall never perish. The fact, the fact that he gives us eternal life and we will never perish. And he takes care of us so well. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. When we become one of his, we're in his hand. Nobody can pluck him out. Nobody can pluck us out. We're in his hand. He's, we're there forever. We belong to God. And he's going to take care of us. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. No one is greater than God. God is the greatest. No one is more powerful. He is all powerful. And it continues on to say, And no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. It repeats that. So that to me means he wants us to really understand we're in his hand and he's got us. He's taking care of us. And it finishes this and says, I and my Father are one. So if we think on this all week long, how he, how much he does for us and how wonderful he is for us. It should start oozing out of us and the joy that it give, should give us should be just sparkling out kind of so that others will want to know about it and will want to know why you have such joy. Speak things like, oh, that wasn't me. If it was good, it was God. Oh, I, I will, I would love to pray about that if you have, you know, they're telling you about something that's not going right. And all these little things that you say coming out of your mouth and the joy you show makes them want, sorry, my computer made a noise, makes them want more and to know more about God. And that gives you a door opening to show them, to invite them to church, to share. And then they share, and then they the others share. And that's how we get our nation back as one nation under God. What better way to live our lives than under God? I mean, he has us in his hand. So that's what I have for this week, finding ways to consider him, to share him with others so they can consider him and to spread the joy all over. Well, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope you put this down in your journal, whether it be on paper or just in your heart, but consider him this week. Consider all he's done for us. Bye-bye.